Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, my name is Jay, and I wanted to talk about Richard Brussel, better known as the Sky King. Now, this story came out in 2018, and I was somewhat familiar with the story of events that occurred, but I wasn't really cleared on exactly what happened until I heard Mr. Ballin's channel, who, by the way, is one of the best YouTubers in the business right now, so if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, go to Mr. Ballin, I'll leave a link in the description down below. On August 10th, 2018, 7.15pm, a ground service agent at SeaTac Airport, Seattle, boards a DHC-8 Alaskan Airlines propeller plane. What he would do next would shock the world. At which point, despite having no flight experience, minus some video games and fiddling with some switches in the cockpit while he was in the tow team, he managed to go full throttle and get this plane careening down the runway and successfully took off. But that was nothing compared to what he did next. Over the course of his one hour long flight, he expertly performed backflips and barrel rolls and these huge loops in the sky, dangerous maneuvers that even expert pilots might risk stalling the plane and crashing. But he didn't. It was like he'd been doing this his whole life. Onlookers on the ground were shocked to see this passenger airline performing these ridiculous stunts so low to the ground that all over Seattle, you had people filming this plane and posting it to social media. So in real time, it was like the world was made aware of Bebo up in the sky. And so people went outside and just watched as he flew around. And then an hour into his flight, Richard would intentionally crash his plane into the Puget Sound on Keytron Island. He was the only casualty. The people that knew Bebo said he had a great sense of humor, he was extremely friendly, and you could always catch him with his head buried in a book. And his co-workers would say he had aspirations to be an officer in the military. And when all those people that knew Bebo the best were asked, why do you think he did what he did on August 10th, 2018? None of them have an answer. And this is basically the heart of the video. Because from what I gathered, I think I can explain why he did it. To get a good idea about the kind of person he is, you really have to look at his past. He was an outstanding athlete playing on the football and track team. He attends college and in 2011, he marries his college sweetheart, Hannah Straisner, at the age of 22. Richard and Hannah would move to Alaska to own a bakery together. There's not much information on it, but most likely they were there near Richard's family, who he was very close to. But after three years, they would end up selling the bakery and moving down to the Seattle area, where Hannah's family was. He would get a job as a ramper, loading and unloading luggages. It wasn't a job he wanted, but they needed the money. It's here I think the problem emanated. He was paid a measly $12 an hour, but what's interesting is there's a $15 minimum wage requirement at SeaTac Airport. He had aspirations of becoming an officer in the military or a manager at SeaTac Airport. After all, he was married, so the onus on him to reform must be tremendous. And after eight years, he's still making minimum wage. That's not a wage you can support your family with. And you could just see it in his face. Like most jobs do, they just suck the life out of you, dashing your hopes and dreams. In this picture here, he just looks defeated, as if there's no hope. It's beyond sadness, he's just given up on life. But don't take my word for it, he says so much in his flight recording. Anyway. Uh, minimum wage, we'll, we'll uh, chalk it up to that. Maybe that'll uh, grease the gears a little bit with the higher up. Maybe, uh, yeah. He was a jovial guy. He was bright, capable, and intelligent. What did he do wrong? He did everything society asked for. He went to college, he married a beautiful woman, and he worked his ass off. Despite that, he still couldn't get ahead. So, instead of playing by the rules, he had nothing to lose. He was going to break it and show the world what he was capable of. To fully appreciate what he did, you have to understand these commercial planes aren't meant to be flown upside down inverted. Because the way the wings and the fuel tanks are set up, flying upside down will guarantee you to stall the plane. So they're saying no one else could have pulled this off except for Richard, which is why he is dubbed the Sky King. People's lives are at stake here! Now Rich, don't, don't say stuff like that. Nah, I just told you, I'm not, I don't want to hurt no one. I just want you to whisper sweet nothing into my ear. Hey, you think if I land this successfully, uh, Alaska will give me a job as a pilot? Uh, you know, I think they would give you a job of doing anything if you could pull this 
on. Yeah, right. No, I'm a white guy. Eh? Do you think they'd give me a job as a pilot? One final daydream for a life that could have been. And what did he say? No, I'm a white guy. And to me, it seems like the rest of that clip was edited out because I've listened to several copies of this transcript and I can't find any follow-up. And I can't believe that the air traffic controller would just ignore that or not try to address it in any manner. I got a lot of people that care about me and uh, it's going to disappoint them to, to hear that I did this. Um, I would like to apologize to each and every one of them. Um, just a broken guy, got a few screws loose, I guess. Never really knew it until <clears throat> now. I'm just a broken guy. That's the statement that really connected me to him. And he has such a cult following. I think the reason why is because people really find him relatable. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't know how to land it. I wasn't really planning on landing it. No, you were planning to go out on your own terms, in your own way. I'm gonna land it, I'm like, uh, in a safe, safe kind of manner. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm gonna try to do a barrel roll, and if that goes good, I'll just go nose down and call it a night. But we've lost one hell of, hell of a guy. He's a great brother, um, good, to, good to everybody. He's a great uncle, um, very good to my daughters, my brother's kids, my sister's kids. Um, he, I know he was a good husband. He loved her, faithful, um, godly man. On behalf of the family, we are stunned and heartbroken. It may seem difficult for those watching at home to believe, but Bebo was a warm, compassionate man. It is impossible to encompass who he was in a press release. He was a faithful husband, a loving son, and a good friend. This is a complete shock to us. We are devastated by these events, and Jesus is truly the only one holding this family together right now. Without him, we would be hopeless. As the voice recordings show, Bebo's intent was not to harm anyone. He was right in saying that there are so many people who have loved him. At this time, the family is moving forward with the difficult task of processing our grief. We appreciate your prayers. Thank you, the family of Bebo Russell.